Hey there, old souls. It's Dr. J. And uh, I have kind of an interesting, well, I think it's an interesting topic for today, or, or more accurately, I think I have an interesting illustration of a topic. And the topic is about, I guess, presence and deep listening and the value of building relationships. And what that means is that we thrive in any area of life, work, uh, personal relationships, love relationships, family relationships, when we take the time and spend the energy getting to know, which doesn't mean intellectually, but means to experience fully on many levels who and what we're in relationship with. Now, where I am right now is a great example. So here I'm out with my doggie and we're walking in our new home on Vancouver Island. And what's interesting about where we live right now, even though it kind of looks like I'm in the middle of nowhere, as some people might say, we're, we're in a really wonderful community. And when I say community, I mean it's a distinct location. There's a defined group of people. Uh, they are united by their location and nothing else. There's no code of conduct. There's no vision statement. There's no religion. There's none of that stuff. But people have a real, real love for this particular neighborhood. And it's been like this for, for decades. Um, look, my dog has found something. Juno, let's go. She's trying to get to know something deeper. <laughs> now, I've lived in a lot of different places as an adult. Uh, I've lived in the United States. I've lived in Canada. I've lived in Mexico and various places in each. And I have to say, this is a place where I, I feel the most community. Now, I've lived in places, uh, particularly in the United States, where people want community, people talk about community, and they talk about the importance of community, but, but the experience lacks something. And I, and I feel like I'm, I'm beginning to understand better what, what is lacking. So here's my illustration. I go out in the mornings, typically, although also later in the day, and I walk my dog. Now, she doesn't always have to be walked because she's got a, a nice big backyard and she can run around and do her thing uh, there. But by going out early, which is why when I make these videos and why it's often cold and I look so tired, <laughs> um, by going out early, I get to run into all the other people who are walking their dogs. And one by one, it seems like I am meeting almost, not everyone, but almost everyone in the neighborhood. And what's happening is we are stopping to talk. Now, of course, because it's a community, uh, self-defined, not, not sort of made by any entity or business or organization, you know, people are curious about who's new. But because there's a strong, healthy sense of community, there's no... I don't experience fear of outsiders. Uh, I'm, I'm a new guy, so anyone could be suspicious about why I'm here. But suspicion isn't what I'm met with. Usually I'm met with curiosity and, and pride, right? Like, hey, you know, I haven't seen you around. Isn't this an amazing place, right? Like, what brings you to this amazing place? Because you're now in relationship to this thing that we love. Like, that is such a different attitude than, hey... What are you doing in this amazing place? This is my amazing place. This is our amazing place. Did they leave the gate open? You know, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> here, we're going to go down in the snow, Juno. Juno really likes this property here because there's deer um, running around. So what happens... Oh, there's the deer tracks. So what happens is with each person I encounter... I get to hear a story. Uh, I hear a story about where I live. Oh yeah, I used to know the people who lived there and they were like this and they were like that and people thought this, but it was really that and you know, those sorts of things. Or they tell me about where they live. Oh, I've been there two years. I've been there 20 years. I've been there 30 years. I've been there, you know, and so on. And uh, I just met a fellow who had a fabulous visit. And I'll, I'll be honest, when I saw him down the street, didn't look by appearance like a guy that I would 
necessarily bond with, right? And maybe in another place, I would have just given a nod and kept moving, but that's not the nature of this community. And that's not how this community is built. So, so we stopped and we visited and it was fabulous, fabulous. He's been here such a long time. And his father and his aunt uh, bought the area, bought in the area and lived in the area for, for decades. I mean, probably over 50 years. And there wasn't much before that. So I learned about <clears throat> the names of places and why they were that way. I learned about certain properties and, and who owned them and why they were uh, sold the way they were. Um, I've learned about some of the, the culture, uh, the older culture, you know, uh, loggers, miners, retired uh, military, retired um, religious service, you know, who, who came here and why. And also, I've learned about the indigenous uh, land use of this area. And not far from here, there were settlements and, and still today, um, <clears throat> all around here is unceded territory as well as historic sites of significance. And by that, I mean both in the archaeological sense, which is kind of the colonial version of significance, but also significance to the communities, places where um, that hold the memory of how things were done, how people lived, uh, how people fished, for example, how people farmed uh, a thousand years ago, and so on. But <clears throat> what does this have to do with you? Well, <clears throat> I think what I'm experiencing is that with each layer and level of place that I'm encountering, with each person that I meet, with each contribution of story, I develop a richer, fuller feeling for the place. I develop a richer sense of myself in the place. You see, the more aspects of place that I learn about, the more aspects of myself that can connect to it. Which means that I am more full. I am more whole each time I think about the place, each time I go out walking in the place, each time I call this place home. Now, that's the real big lesson here today, and I, I, I'm going to try to say it again, um, maybe a little differently. <clears throat> Ooh, sorry. When I discover deeper levels to the people, places, and things around me, it may test my patience at first. I mean, that's the typical situation these days, right? Like, do I have to get to know them? I don't have time for this. I'm not into building relationships with people I don't need to or people I don't need something from. But what happens is the more complex and full and rich our understanding of any person, place, or thing is, then the more of ourselves gets activated in relationship to that thing. Are you getting that? So if I relate to this tree as a simple example, and it's just tree, well then as I walk by tree, that's about all I get in return. I get a very thin experience, a very thin connection with reality. Maybe there's something biological going on that I'm not totally aware of, you know, phytochemicals in the air and so on. But <clears throat> when I take time and I recognize the type of tree, how that tree was used by traditional people, uh, whether that tree was once the type of tree that was logged, and maybe this is a, a actually more recent growth, um, when I understand the life that's in that tree, whether it's the moss or the birds or the squirrels or the ravens, you see, what happens is when I walk by that tree, then more of me is fed, more of me is alive, more of me is awake. <clears throat> and this is really the opportunity we have in community and I would say in our closest relationships the more we can honor and accept 
and receive the fullness of the people, places, and things that we relate to, the more we have access to that fullness in ourselves. And it can be uncomfortable because we may, we may not like everything we see in others and we may not even want everything we see in others, right? I mean, we want our partners to be a certain way. We want our workplace to be a certain way. Uh, we want our government to be a certain way and so on. But, I mean, they are what they are. You can want it to be different, but, but that doesn't change what it is. And if you're going to change your relationship to what it is, whether it can change or not, then knowing it more fully, or at the very least being open and willing to allow it to be more full and whole and real, will completely change your experience. And it will help you to see and experience and relate to those very same things in your own self and in your own life. So where we have discomfort in community, where we have discomfort in relationships, where we have a, a thinness or a shallowness, it kind of reveals something lacking, I, I would say, something lacking in ourselves, something we're not willing to look at, something we don't get to contact. And perhaps the conclusion in some way, uh, if there are a few things to conclude with, is that we, you know, I don't know. It's my experience that life is just not always easy. And so we need all the jet energy we possibly can get in life. And that also means we need... Uh, oh, hey, here's my neighbor. I have to stop this and greet my neighbor because there's nothing more important than greeting a neighbor. I'm going to finish this in a moment. 